welcome to our first video by Attic PC Guy in the field of tutorials and guides for starter PC enthusiasts and people beginning to learn about building and maintaining and uh, replacing computer parts. This episode will go about hard drives, both SSDs, solid state drives, HDDs, hard disk drives, and then further along a smaller section on uh, hybrid drives which combine both HDD and SSD uh, elements in them and M2 SSD drives, which are basically an upgrade to SSD drives. I will start by explaining the difference between an SSD, solid state drive, and an HDD, hard drive disk, which uh, is basically boils down to a completely different type of technology. So I'll go point by point explaining the differences. But as an overhead, an SSD is a smaller drive that works much like your typical USB flash drive. It does not have a, a moving part, it does not have an actual disk. The data gets recorded uh, in that flash drive and is read simply by the digital uh, impulses, let's say. An NGD, on the other hand, is an actual moving disk, a magnetic disk, that gets re uh, read by and written in by a header and that uh, actually has to spin to read that data. That is the basic difference between HDD and the SSD. Now, now what does this translate to in practice? An SSD has a much smaller size and it has smaller um, storage capacity as well. If you compare side by side according to price, you always get less storage space per dollar, per euro, whatever, in an SSD than you would get on an HDD. Although the SSD has very big advantages compared to an HDD, which are the speed mostly. That is the biggest selling point on SSD. You will usually get an increase of speed of anywhere between five to 10 times faster than a standard HDD. That is the biggest selling point, And obviously that is a very big advantage for anyone, no matter what use you have on your PC. Another advantage is that there are no actual moving parts on an SSD, while on the HDD you have the spinning disk and the, the header that moves it, that reads the disk and all that. On an SSD there are no actual moving parts. What that translates to is you will have a lot less noise and a lot less vibration from an SSD. You also have less power draw from uh, your computer because there are no moving parts so it does not have to power those moving parts. And um, it also means that there will be a lot less mechanical wear uh, as the parts spin, as, as the disc spins, and as the header moves to read the disc. You will have that equipment will obviously be worn out throughout the years. On an SSD that will not happen, which will lead to less mechanical wear and tear and uh, possibly make it last longer in that aspect. An HDD on the other hand, since it has those moving parts, is more susceptible to mechanical failure. It is also more susceptible if you have, for example, a laptop or if your uh, hard drive case is moved around a lot. It has, it is a bit more uh, vulnerable to, let's say, if you drop it or if you shake it really bad or if it vibrates really bad. It is vulnerable to being affected by uh, that movement. It will also produce more heat it will use more power, as said before, and also vibration and noise. You will have literally no noise at all from an SSD compared to an HDD. Now, that sounds all very uh, appealing, but in fact, you will possibly have some issues if SSDs, not in everyday use, but when it starts getting older. Because one tendency that uh, hard drives tend to have when they are starting to get old and having uh, starting to fail is they do not usually fail in one go, poof, hard drive is uh, unusable. Usually you start getting signs of it like increased noise, uh, increased vibration, uh, being slower, uh, not being accessible sometimes. And that, those are very clear signs that your hard drive is about to fail. And that gives you a chance to, if you recognize those signs, to back up your data, get a new hard drive and um, transfer it all there and you won't lose anything because you backed it up in time. On an SSD it's a different story. Usually when it does fail, it fails suddenly and in one go 
and uh, sometimes there's not a whole lot you can do about it but you have to pay a lot more attention to your SSD than you have to, to your hard drive because you don't get as many obvious signs of failure. As far as life expectancy goes, and the normal use that is, I am not uh, counting if you have it stored on the shelf somewhere for 5-10 years. If you have it on your computer being used and if you're not moving it around a lot, the life expectancy is roughly the same. You can expect a hard drive to last anywhere between 5 to 10 years, possibly more if you have a high quality one. There's records of hard drives still being perfectly usable after 30-40 years. Um, on an SSD you can expect it to last also again under normal use you can expect it to last anywhere between 5 to 10 years it depends uh, on the model there are models that have 2, 3, 5 year warranty and that's just the warranty it's still expected to work after warranty of course and uh, then you also have models that have a 10 year warranty and uh, obviously similarly you also are able to expect it to still work after the warranty for a period of years. So similarly, there are no massive differences in terms of uh, how long you can expect your equipment to last. There is also a third type of uh, hard drive that I have not listed, which is, uh, which is called the hybrid uh, disks. They are basically a normal hard drive that has a small partition, let's call it, it's a um, another separate part of the hard drive. So it has a hard drive that is just like any other normal hard drive, a larger size, uh, cheaper storage, uh, moving disk, all that stuff. And it also has that partition that is a flash uh, unit partition that is basically similar to an SSD. That partition will usually be much smaller than an actual SSD is and also much smaller than a normal hard drive is. Let's say that you can expect an average hard drive to have 500 gigabytes to up to a few terabytes of storage. An SSD usually ranges from uh, 120 gigabytes for the smaller models. There might be 64, but anyway, um, 64 or 120 gigabytes for the lower models and up to one, three, uh, the more commercial models for consumer use usually are up to one terabyte or so. So it's much smaller than an HD in comparison. But in any case, on a, hybr uh, on a hybrid drive, you will have a normal HD storage with uh, 500 gigabytes, one terabyte, whatever, you name it. And then you'll have uh, the SSD flash partition, which will be not very big. 4, 8, maybe 16 or 32 at most gigabytes of storage. Um, what that means is that it brings the price of the drive down a bit and it gives you a bit of both worlds, let's say. But yeah, you will be able to have your system files there and uh, not much else. Uh, they usually, in the let's call it smart, uh, manner, they automatically transfer the most used files to the quicker flash partition and they leave the other files on the hard drive partition. Uh, like I said, um, you'll be able to have your system files there most likely because they obviously are very used. Maybe it will move your most used programs there, but it's not a very big space. So in the, at the end of the day, it might help a little bit. It's definitely faster than a standard normal hard drive HDD but it's not as flexible, easy to use, and fast as uh, an SSD. So because of that, I don't really recommend going for a hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, type of drive. You won't get much gain from it. You also will not save much unless you want to only have one in place of two drives in your PC. So where do we stand there? Should, we, should you get an SSD for your computer or a hard drive? My advice is you should get both. You should get an SSD, possibly a small one, because as I said, it is a lot sm a lot faster than uh, your average hard drive, a lot, lot faster. You will probably notice that if you have, let's say a 30 second to 40 second boot time when starting up your computer with a hard drive, you can expect uh, 10, 12, 13 seconds, or possibly less if you don't have a lot of starter programs, boot time with your SSD. And that's not just the boot time. Any program 
or game or application that you have on your SSD will run a lot faster than if you have it on your hard drive, simply because the files get read a lot faster and get written a lot faster. So you will probably notice uh, up to 30% speed increase in any application, possibly more, possibly less, depending on how they're optimized, of course. But you, the speed difference is very massive. And considering that um, the cheaper SSDs are going for roughly 40 euros-ish, you can easily, even if you do not have an enormous budget for a large SSD that will hold all your files, you can easily get um, one of the cheaper ones, uh, 60 or 120 gigabyte. You'll have enough there for Windows, definitely. And you can probably pack the most used programs and applications there so you can benefit from the store, uh, increased speed. Now, as the size is not very big, I also advise getting a hard drive a larger one, uh, however, whatever you need really. Uh, maybe you need two terabytes or three if you do a lot of uh, video editing or things of the sort. Maybe you don't need much and you just have a few movies lying around that you want to store. So I would have the SSD and then I have the I would have the HDD as an extra drive for your bigger files, files and games and applications that you don't use much. They can just be stored there. They don't really necessarily need uh, quick access or quick write because you don't use them often and then you can have both uh, the best of both worlds and it doesn't cost you all that much because yeah uh, SSDs are not uh, very expensive at least not the cheaper models smaller models and you still have the benefits of storage from the HDD to whatever you want to use as far as connectors go, any basically any modern uh, motherboard will support SSDs. Any motherboard will support hard drives because they're an essential part of a computer, basically. Uh, they use the same type of connector. They use the same type of uh, power supply connector as well. So in that aspect, they are fully compatible with each other. You can always uh, use the cables from one to the other. You don't need anything extra to use it. Um, most cases these days, computer cases, they will have uh, special places for you to put your hard drive. If it does not, like I said, the hard drive, an SSD does not have uh, moving parts, so you can safely, it's, it's never good to have it just dangling around, but um, you can, uh, for example, just lie it flat at the bottom of the case or some place where it's just lying there. And if you don't move your PC around that much and it's not uh, just dangling around, it can be there loose. You won't notice uh, issues from it, but it's not advised, obviously. But um, it's a workaround if you don't have a suitable case. So any case can hold an SSD, basically. It will have... Um, I will actually show you on this case that I have lying around here. Now, as promised, I'll let you guys see how the SSD, SSD and the hard drive cages look like. I do not currently have a spare hard drive or SSD that I can show you how to install, but I'll be working on it. For now, I will show you where they go, at least. Most cases have a hard drive cage such as this, never mind the dust. This is the case I used for my computer before I built my desk around it, as you might see on the other videos. Um, this is the hard drive case. You can expect the hard drive to be about this big, slightly smaller perhaps, but around this size. And uh, most cases will have it uh, fixed to either side either in this orientation, uh, left to right, right to left, or uh, basically flipped 90 degrees like so. And um, they will have screws on either side that you can fasten the HDD so that it does not vibrate and produce too much noise as it works. In this case, this uh, situation, it has one of these little thingies that you just uh, place to the side here rotate and uh, it is fixed in place and that's it and that's how simple it is and um, you would go through the back side here and plug the connectors 
one connector would one the uh, serial ATA data cable would come out the back here to the motherboard which usually has the pins right around this area so you can plug in the data cable and the power cable would just run through here to the PSU in the back which can be here in this case on other cases it will be up there hanging up there so yeah that's how it, you would place a hard drive for an SSD it's usually this tiny little um, cage here a 2.5 inch slot if I remember correctly it would just slide in here with the connectors to the back you would, same story as the SSD say the cable to the motherboard power cable to the PSU and you are good to go it would uh, similarly to the HDD it would have screws on the side fixing them although like I said a hard uh, an SSD does not vibrate or does not have moving parts so it could even be loose in there if you happen to not have screws or lose the screws if they would not come included you could literally have it here loose and it would not damage the hardware at all if your case does not have such a place to fix the SSD you could literally have it for example lying here on the bottom unattached or you could have it on top of the hard drive cage or anywhere else that you might have the room for so yeah that is uh, how you can expect to place an SSD and hard drive on your computer I will try to find some spare ones to make a video of it but for now you have a very, pretty good idea of how it's done as an example of what prices you can expect for this hardware, as you can see, a one terabyte um, hard drive will probably cost you around 40 something euros. Obviously, there's cheaper on, or more expensive models, two terabytes, 75. If you don't do a lot of video editing or storage, one terabyte will most likely be enough. Maybe even less will be enough. But uh, in any case, it's not expensive, so why not have a bit more available space just in case? On the other hand, an SSD, I'll just Google it like this, this is a 500 gigabyte, which is reasonably big for an SSD, you'll pay 90 euros, Samsung is a good brand, and it also has other options, as you can see, 250 gigabytes for 50 euros, and um, yeah, then you have other brands, Kingston SSD, 120 gigabytes, 25 euros, it's well worth the price to pay for such a increase in speed because it is very noticeable even if you don't change any other hardware if you simply add an ssd and put your windows there you will notice such a massive increase in the speed it's not even funny it's so it's a game changer if you've never used an ssd now there is also a, a fourth type of ss of um, drive which is an m2 ssd drive so it uses the same technology as an SSD, but it goes on a PCIe slot. And this not every motherboard supports. Um, you probably will need a, a motherboard with a special slot for an M2 or use an existing PCIe slot, which um, is not great because the card will be dangling in there and it can sag a bit and that could lead to failure. But um, yeah, this is the m2 ssd model it is more expensive than a normal ssd it is a bit faster because it does not rely on a sata connection like the ssds do um but yeah it is is it worth the increase for a normal user most likely not um, it is faster true but it's not as big of a jump as you will see from a hard drive to an ssd and considering the price increase, I would say for your average everyday user, it's not really worth it if you already have an SSD. And for the sake of completion, I will show you a hybrid drive. And uh, it's a bit more expensive than an average uh, hard drive. It's a bit, and yeah, I mean, you have one terabyte of storage for 61 euros. You could spend an extra 20 ish get a normal hard drive you could get an ssd for example that cheap one that i showed you for 25 euros you spend an extra let's say 15 to 20 euros as opposed to just getting this 
and you would get a lot a lot more um, SSD storage space let's say flash storage space because uh, let's see if I can find the specifications sure it is a one terabyte of uh, total storage space but let's see if I can find the capacity of the yes exactly you have uh, hmm. No, it is not listed here, actually, at least I didn't see it at first glance. But in any case, you would have a very small flash space compared to the full flash space of an SSD. So I personally do not consider it worth it. So where do we stand on SSD versus HDD? You have on the HDD side, they are cheaper, bigger. They last for a bit longer not a massively amount longer but they last for a bit longer that is the advantages disadvantages of the hdds more noise more heat more vibration slower speeds on the ssd side you have faster speeds you have uh, more resistance to mechanical wear and or any sort of physical abuse that it might incur downsides they're more expensive they're smaller and they are susceptible to failing in one go as opposed to actually giving you signs and giving you time to back up your data now like i said my advice is get both an hdd and an ssd for your system you don't need to get to go super expensive on the ssds if you just want uh, the basic speed boost let's call it because uh, the difference between the faster ones and the, let's call it slower ones, although they are definitely still not slow, the difference is not massive in speed. And whatever, whichever one you get, you'll notice a massive speed increase over your SSD, uh, over your AGD, I'm sorry. So, as I said, get one of each for a computer, you'll definitely have enough um, serial ata slots for the um, connection for the data connection your power supply will definitely have enough um, uh, serial ata plugs as well to power it up it won't take much space nearly every case will hold it that is my advice do not bother with hybrid drives at least i wouldn't it's not a it's not a big gain considering uh, the price increase and it's also not much cheaper than getting one of each you won't save much and you won't you won't save much and you won't gain much either from having it so i don't think it's a worthwhile option also i would not bother with m2 unless you really are going for the best of the best and uh, you are willing to pay more for a uh, not very noticeable speed increase that is my opinion and that is my advice to anyone who is picking out parts for a PC or trying his hand on building a PC for the first time. On the further episode, I will hopefully show you guys how to plug them in. It's not very complicated. You might actually say that it's not a very useful video, but uh, for the sake of completion, I will try to um, show you guys how it's done. Now, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope the information has been useful. If uh, you think, um, this uh, kind of content could be more visible on our channel and if you think that uh, we could have a bit more of this please let me know i will try my best to um, have this sort of videos more often if you enjoyed it if you found it useful please uh, like and, sus and subscribe help us uh, get this channel started and gain a bit more steam and more support and hopefully that will uh, enable us to in the future have more content and more specialized content both in quantity and quality Thank you for your time. I'm Attic PC Guy at your service, and uh, I'll see you next time.